I had my way, everything would be so nice. This world would be like Paris. No, it would be a paradise. No one would ever have to say, I'm going to get my wish someday. All one would have to do is say, this is my order, if you may. Welcome to another episode of The School Without Walls. I'm host and founder of this educational program called by the name mentioned, School Without Walls. The date is January the 6th, 2017. We are pre-recorded and we are preparing for the month of February doing Black History presentations. Uh, at this time, I want to make sure that we understand the process of delivering to the African American, uh, the African American uh, is history. Uh, we don't want to uh, allow programs on, t on the general television to dictate to how we should do this, which will perhaps give a lot of dates and uh, they start the uh, history with, the, with uh, America, USA. Matter of fact, the African existed way before that. And we, we've talked about that in earlier episodes. So I want to start with that and move into more contemporary history, which is dealing with persons and dates and times. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the genesis of Africans are African Americans in the USA, the beginning, the genesis. Uh, I'm going to start with, uh, I think, a uh, great man, Benjamin Banneker. But proud of that, we must understand that these articles that I've written uh, are critical. This is uh, a critical need for a deeper understanding of the role that African Americans have played in the history of America. It is becoming interest increasingly evident that a race that does not know its past is confused in its present state and is therefore unable to chart a future. So we want to do all that we can uh, to catch up with those who had the chance of starting ahead of us. Benjamin Banneker is the first person I'm going to talk about. And keep in mind, this is not an entertainment, it's an it's a, it's, it's a educational endeavor. So it's an educational endeavor. So what you want to do is get your pens and papers out at home and take notes. Uh, Benjamin Banner, as a, as a free black man, was spent his entire life in Baltimore County, Maryland, as a tobacco farmer. But he was much more than just a farmer. Again, Benjamin Banneker spent all of his life in the state of Maryland at, in Baltimore County. He was a farmer, but he was more than that. Uh, he was a near genius who spent his leisure time teaching himself mathematics and astronomy. Now, we must keep in mind that during this era in which he lived, which was in the uh, uh, 17, I think he was born in 1730s or somewhere like that. There were, we didn't have a public school system like we have today. Uh, we had private schools and uh, we also had the slavery institution. And even though some people in the Northeast were, some Africans were free, they were free, but still they weren't permitted to attend these, uh, most of many of the public schools. So he had to study on his, with the help of, of just teachers. Uh, his series of almanacs, almanacs on calculation of the heavenly bodies and his unique ability to accurately survey land was very, very important during his day. Uh, it came to President George Washington, who realized that this man was so intelligent, he, till he, uh, the information came to George Washington, and what he did was, he was uh, George Washington, the first president of the United States, 
and he uh, urged the Secretary of State to appoint Banneker as an assistant to plan and design the city of Washington, D.C. Please note this fact about a black genius as in escaped the attention of many Americans. Why? Because Banneker was a black man living in a racist country, USA, uh, meaning that although he had all those skills, mind you, he was not, could not be recognized as a surveyor, uh, he had to be listed as a worker, a laborer. Later on in history, through research, we found out that he was actually a surveyor and an excellent one. We're going to stop it for a break. We'll be back in just a few minutes talking about Benjamin Banneker. You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the Pride. Those of you who just joined us, I'm Antonio Hobbs, host and founder of this educational program, preparing for a black history uh, program, and I'm talking about Benjamin Banneker, one of the African-American geniuses of America. And I just mentioned that he was, uh, he was asked by the president, George Washington, to work as a surveyor to outline the capital city, although the record would not show that he was a surveyor, but it did show that he was a worker or uh, uh, a laborer. Uh, all right, Bunnaker is known as the first black American scientist. Benjamin Bunnaker is on record as the first black American scientist. Now we're going to talk about his origin. Banneker's grandmother was Molly Welch. Molly Welch was a white woman. His grandmother was Molly Welch, W-L-C-H. She was a farmer milkmaid in England. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Welch was sent to the colonies in the USA as an indentural servant, okay? An indentural servant is a person of that day that came from Europe in, in, at that period of time. Many of the European Americans came over here. They were poor and they weren't able to pay their passage to America. So the person who received them in the USA paid their passage. And then they had to work for so many years uh, to become free to do whatever they wanted to do. And of course, they had the privilege to purchase land and go on and make a decent living for themselves. So she was an indentured servant for that reason. Uh, her name was again, uh, uh, Mary, Mot Motley Welch. Motley Welch was her name. Okay. Uh, she was the grandmother of Benjamin Boniker. So we're going to talk a little a bit about her in order to get from her to Benjamin. Uh, I might be being a little redundant, so I'm going to read a note. And during that time, uh, I've talked about that. During that time, he was not listed as a surveyor. We don't, we're talking about her mother, B uh, Benjamin's mother, Molly Welch, a farmer milkmaid in England. Uh, 
So after she served for several years working for somebody, she gained her freedom. And of course, generally that's a stay of seven years. After that, she purchased a farm. She needed help to work the farm. Thus, she purchased two slaves. One of these slaves was described as a man of bright intelligence. His name was Banneker. This was a royal name out of Africa. Banneker was an African name, Banneker. Note, both of the slaves joined the Christian church of that time. However, it's, I think it's nice to note that Banneker remained faithful to his African religion. And it says here that he prayed to his African God every Sunday after he went to church. It's important for us to make a note that it was not true when uh, the Africans were brought over here were, were referred to as heathens. They were not heathens. They knew God, but they just didn't know God according to the English definition of God because they had a different religion. They didn't have a Christian religion, but they had a God. All right. We want to also note that Molly owned two slaves and she was definitely against slavery but it was important that Molly would have to have slaves because she could not work her uh, farm so she labored to purchase two slaves and uh, we're going to stop there for the break and we will continue talking about the history of uh, Benjamin Banneker by discussing his lineage, his grandmother, and we'll talk about her and her children, and then so forth and so on. Thank you. Have kids lost their imagination? We set off to find out. We offer them a chance to test out the most realistic game in development. A game called The Forest. Surround sound, HD, fully immersive. It's a different world, this is just the world. It doesn't even require technology. Maybe imagination isn't lost after all. Maybe it's just been playing hide and seek in a forest nearby. It's closer than you think. Those who just joined us, I'm Dr. Antonio Hobbs, host and founder of the educational program called The School Without Walls. We are in preparation for our Black History Month. And uh, I've been talking today about a very, very important African-American scholar called Benjamin Banneker. He was known as the uh, first African-American scientist. And we were discussing his, his, uh, his mother, his mother's Molly, Molly Welch, born in England, sent here as an indentured servant, worked out of time and purchased some land, and then she had a need to get some workers, so she, it, she didn't like it, but she went on and purchased uh, two slaves. And that's just where we're going now. A few years, uh, uh, after working, these slaves helped her to develop her land, her property. She gave them their freedom. 
because she never did believe in slavery, so they, she, she purchased them, then they worked a while, but she freed them, she gave them their freedom. A few years after the freedom, one of the slaves was named Banneker. A few years after Banneker was freed, Molly and Banneker married. In time, children were born. Uh, there were four children. All of the children were girls. Molly was the oldest daughter. And of course, Molly married first. She married a free slave named Robert. Follow me closer because we're getting down to Benjamin. Benjamin hadn't come on the scene at this point. Robert, the African slave who was a freeman at that time, took on his wife's last name. Her name was Banneker. Her name was Mary Banneker. So Robert became Robert Banneker. All right, from Robert Banneker, came several children, but the first one was a boy, and the others were girls. This boy was named uh, Benjamin. Banneker, Benjamin Banneker. He was the first child of Mary and Robert Banneker. Of course, uh, as we conclude on this, the report shows, the, the report is about Benjamin Banneker, the scientist and scholar. But in order to reach ben Benjamin, we had to talk about his lineage. And his lineage goes back to England uh, and comes by way of Molly Welch. And of course, Molly had uh, three, uh, three daughters. The oldest one was named Mary. Mary married a freeman, a slave who had been freed, and his name was Robert. And Robert took on the name of his wife, who was Banneker. And of course, they had a one son and several girls and the son's first name was Benjamin. So we, we come up with Benjamin Banneker, who was a scientist. He is the inventor of a clock. All right, now Benjamin Banneker did not invent the first clock, but he invented the first clock that had chimes on it. That was what he gets credit for. The clocks that we hear that strike some of them have a bird jump out and all that. That was done by Benjamin Banneker. Also, Benjamin was hired to, uh, by the really George Washington, the President of the United States, to work as an assistant in outlining the city of Washington, D.C., which is supposed to be one of the most perfectly designed cities in the world. By that, they mean that most of the streets if you get on the street, you will go to the Capitol. It runs to the Capitol like box. So we have about two more minutes, and I'll pretty well conclude it, my message concerning them. And I have one other person I'll talk about for the next few minutes. Uh, we're dealing with the genesis of African Americans in history. All right, the first black American, the first black Americans were the 20 black to arrive in Jamestown, Virginia, about the latter part of August, August 1619. S surveying evidence indicate that the first black settlers were not slaves. I think it's important for us to understand that. And not only the first were not slaves, I think I left this out. Benjamin Banneker was never a slave. His mother and his daddy were freemen. And of course, he was born free too. And uh, we're going to close out here with this we're talking about, and we will continue talking about the genesis of African Americans. This is part one. It, it appears from the record that uh, 
these 19 were assigned <coughs> the same status as indigent, endangered, though it is getting kind of dry, Randy, uh, servants. We want to end here and thank Mr. Randy Kelly, the uh, TV production manager for working so diligently with us in this endeavor. Thank you again and again. And don't forget to come over to doc, uh, Dr. Uh, Hill's church on, at 3 p.m. Uh, he didn't give me a date, did he? Fourth Sunday. I believe it is. Fourth Sunday, 3 p.m. That's uh, his Reverend Hill's church. Thank you.